Fujifilm X-T3 or Fujifilm X-T4? That is the question. Similar cameras, different prices, substantial differences that makes one better than the other for certain people. The Fujifilm X-T3 was released in 2018, the Fujifilm X-T4 in 2020. Two years difference, not that much. It is a hard choice, don't get me wrong. This is the video I wish I'd seen back in 2020 when I bought my first Fujifilm camera ever. But let's see the similarities between them. Both Fujifilm X-T3 and Fujifilm X-T4 have the same sensor, X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor. Similar video recording capabilities, 4K 24, 25 and 30 frames per second, 4K 60 frames per second with a slight crop of 1.18, 8-bit internal H.264, 10-bit internal H.265 420 and 10-bit external H.265 422. 4K all intra up to 400 megabits per second. We have the same autofocus algorithm after the Fujifilm X-T3 update last year that took the, the X-T3 almost as good as the X-T4. They say it's the same. Same photo capabilities, 20 frames per second electronic shutter, 30 frames per second electronic shutter with a crop of 1.28. They are both weather sealed and of course the same Fuji juice flavor. Uh, same colors, same Fujifilm simulation except for the Eterna Bleach Bypass on the X-T4. It's bleh, personal taste of course. As I said, I bought my first Fujifilm camera back in 2020 in September, but going back in time I would buy the X-T4 instead. And that's mainly because the X-T4 has those small and big details that make this camera perfect for me. IBIS, in-body image stabilization. I cannot tell you how many times this feature saved my ass on client jobs. As a hybrid shooter, sometimes I shoot both video and photos. I always carry two cameras, one on the gimbal in one hand and another attached to my body strap for photos. But sometimes I prefer going a little bit lighter and I want to shoot without the gimbal, especially in those cases where I don't use a stabilized lens like the 85mm Viltrox, for example. With the Fujifilm X-T3, on the other hand, you cannot do that. You either use a tripod or you use a stabilizer or a stabilized lens. Flip out screen. Well, I think this is a matter of taste, generally, but as a hybrid shooter, again, as somebody who does YouTube and re records themselves, I think it's a must-have. With the Fujifilm X-T3, every time I shot a YouTube video, I would have to triple check if I was in frame, if I was in focus, I would use a mannequin head to set up the frame, to set up everything, and it would take me a lot of time, and sometimes I wouldn't even want to shoot that video, to begin shooting that video because of this process. I tried the external monitor, but it would add extra steps, like extra batteries, I, have to, I had to attach the monitor to the camera, I had an extra cable and it would become a mess. I mean, it's not to say that it isn't useful, by all means it's very useful, but it would add extra steps to my process. And flip out screen solved all those problems. The Fujifilm X-T4 allows you to back up the video on a second SD card. The Fujifilm X-T3 only allows you to back up photos. This is a feature that is very important, especially for hybrid shooters or for those shooters that do weddings and live events, because you cannot go back and shoot that again and you need to have some uh, peace of mind let's say if something happens to one of the SD cards at least you got the other one now this has never happened to me before to, to have a, an SD card fail fingers crossed but it could happen so it's better safe than sorry pro tip if you are going to record videos that are longer than four minutes I highly suggest that you use at least a 64 gigabyte or 128 gigabytes SD card uh, because if you use a 32 or lower, the camera will split the videos at the 4 minute mark and you will have multiple videos 4 minutes long. I, I don't really like that, I want my camera to record one file and I will deal with that file. The battery life on the Fujifilm X-T4 is very much improved. Now I can go through a whole day without switching batteries. I mean, it depends on what you're doing, if you only shoot photos or if you only shoot video or if you do both. Maybe you'll have to have an extra battery, but I you don't need more than two, you know? With adding IBIS and the bigger battery to the camera comes a bigger body. And with a bigger body, the ergonomics are improved. Now you can actually hold the camera in your hand. You, you can feel the body, how sturdy it is. And the grip, you can actually grip the whole, the whole body, really. The whole grip of the camera, let's say. It just feels 
better overall in the hand. You don't need a cage anymore or a handle. It feels safe and secure in your hand. Now here are the things that people bitch a little bit about when it comes to the X-T4. The port doors on the side of the camera aren't removable anymore like they used to be on the X-T4. You could just take them off. I don't really mind it. I don't care. And the second thing is the removal of the input headphone jack um, and they put a USB-C port in there. I don't see how that is such an issue really. They give you an adapter for your headphones so that you can still uh, monitor the audio. Just bring other batteries if you need the camera to last longer. You don't, re you don't always have to attach power straight through the USB-C port or use battery grip or I don't know monitor the audio through another camera you know it, it, there's a lot of workarounds it's not even that big of a deal you know other differences between the, the, the X-T4 and the X-T3 uh, as far as photography is concerned the Fujifilm X-T4 shoots at 15 frames per second while the X-T3 only at 11 but that's not such a big deal uh, unless you shoot sport or wildlife usually Fujifilm shooters shoot mainly street and stuff that go a little bit slower i don't know the fujifilm xt4 has a dedicated switch and a dedicated menu for video and the settings remain separated from the photo menu with the exception of the shutter speed but that's easily changeable for video shooters it's life-saving for photographers i guess they don't really care the fuji xt4 also has the possibility to shoot at 240 frames per second while the X-T3 only 120 frames per second, but I usually wouldn't shoot that unless I really want to slow things down. I wouldn't shoot for a client, in, not even in 120 frames per second, unless it's really specific and it really needs to be shot really slow. Uh, but other than that, I, I would never go because the quality isn't just the same. Okie dogs, people, that's been a mouthful. <laughs> um, so which camera should you choose? I guess it depends on what you do. It depends on your needs, basically. Um, I would suggest that you buy the X-T4 against, you know, all the other photographers, against all the other YouTubers that say, oh yeah, you should go with the X-T3 because it's more or less the same. Um, it wasn't for me personally, because I shoot both video and photo and I'm a hybrid shooter and I'm always on the go. I'm always running gun, so it makes more sense for me to have the X-T4. Um, having both cameras and having used them both made me realize even more that. Um, but if you only shoot photos and if you don't, don't have any need to shoot video at all, I guess it makes sense to, to get the X-T3 instead of the X-T4. If you need stabilization, just use a tripod for, you know, landscapes or whatever, or get a stabilized lens like the 18 to 55. Let me know down in the comments what's your favorite, the X-T3 or the X-T4 and why. And if you want to learn more about the Fujifilm X-T3, click this video right here. If you want to learn more about the Fujifilm autofocus settings, click this video right here and you'll see me in the next video. Bye!